and welcome to today's What's Up with Prophecy Today. You know, we all love our smartphones and internet access. And what would you do without YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, your internet music, and exchange of photos and videos with friends and neighbors? Well, this list can go on and on, but we sure are attached to our internet and our cell phones, aren't we? Well, today in Myanmar, used to be called Burma, they're experiencing a problem. Myanmar protesters urge guerrilla strikes amidst internet cutoff. Well, this is serious business for them. They have no internet. And, and you know, Myanmar or Burma is not the only country that is having this difficulty. In China, the great firewall of the internet is shut down. It's very difficult for people in China to get uh, to visit normal internet websites. In fact, it's impossible virtually. Another country that has uh, severe restrictions on the internet is North Korea. Let's take a look at what that really looks like in North Korea. Here's an article I have. Uh, it's, it's talking about the restrictions in North Korea. It's from the, uh, I think it was New York Times. North Korea notoriously restricts the access to internet for its citizens, but it does in fact maintain some websites, according to this article, that can be seen outside the country. But when they really looked into it and found out what websites they could see, they found that they were about uh, fewer than 30 websites versus the millions that are out there. And the 30 websites were mainly propaganda by North Korea. Well, another large country is Saudi Arabia. Online censorship in Saudi Arabia soared after the murder of one of their uh, people there. So Saudi Arabia re severely restricts the internet also. So you may ask, Art, what do smartphones and internet access have to do with end time prophecy? Well, I think there are basically two things that I want you to consider regarding end time prophecy and the ability to uh, access the internet and your telephone. Number one thing is electricity and the second thing is fiber optic cables. So let's take a look at those. Well, you know from my other videos that the great tribulation that's ahead of us will last 1,335 days. Well, this 1,335 days starts off with the censor from heaven being cast down onto the earth. And what will happen when that censor is cast down? Let's take a look at Revelation 8, verse 5. Then the angel took the censer. Now, that's a, it's a metal container that has coals in it. Now, the censer was used in the, the, uh, in the sanctuary to uh, ha have light fires with. So the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar of in incense. And that's where the fire was always burning, on that altar of incense. And that's in the holy room and threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and I think a global earthquake. So when that sensor is cast down to the earth, there will be a global earthquake. Well, and, and this earthquake is just not like a normal earthquake that we're used to seeing day in and day out around the earth. It's not like the earthquakes that we've seen in California or in out near uh, Japan when they had that terrible uh, earthquake about 10 years ago. This is something different. This earthquake, this global earthquake, earthquake that goes around the world will be initiated by Jesus. And why is he doing that? He is announcing the start of the 1,335 days of the Great Tribulation. So this earthquake that would be felt around the world, this is God-caused earthquake. It is not a, a normal, if you will, uh, earthquake that the earth has seen over the years. And this is God's way of giving earth a wake-up announcement 
of what's about to happen. So what will be the result of this earthquake? Well, internet data and cell phone calls, you may or may not know, are primarily routed through fiber optics cables that are laid between the various Earth continents. So when you place a, a call uh, between uh, to a relative, say, that's uh, on vacation in another uh, continent or your relatives, you are using probably these fiber optic cables that go underneath the uh, ocean. And if you're wanting to get data from Facebook and you're living in say England or, or Europe or Africa, well, you are probably using a fiber optics cable to access the computers that have the Facebook data. So internet access and cell phones and the internet use fiber optics cable that are, that's routed throughout the world and earthquakes will definitely interrupt that. Well, what about electrical generating plants of all types? Well, they're going to trip offline, as they say. So these plants, when, when the earth starts shaking, these plants have sensors that will trip the, uh, the generating uh, units offline so as to minimize their damage. So instantly, you might say, when there's this global earthquake that goes around the world, electricity will stop within a few uh, minutes, probably. W what else is going to happen? Well, wind generators. You've all seen these huge towers that have these uh, propellers that are turning around. Well, these devices uh, are very complicated also, and they have sensors that, w that protect these large fan blades that are used to generate electricity. So these sensors will, will put that generator immediately in a standby mode when it senses the earth moving underneath in its foundation. Now, what about solar power generation? Well, there's very, very little of that percentage-wise that supplies our daily electrical need. But a great deal of that will not work either. Why? Well, even though it may be generating electricity in a remote spot, it will be difficult for the, the high voltage towers to, to uh, transmit that power to the cities where they will be needed. So these high voltage towers will uh, also trip off. So, so in, in essence, the electricity will be shut down during this global earthquake. And of course, your local towns and villages will have uh, telephone poles that will, uh, will break and uh, cause your local uh, internet service and electricity to be interrupted. Now, a lot of cell towers uh, around the world have standby electrical generators. But those electrical generators have a finite amount of fuel to power them. So most likely they will, uh, some of them may stay online then try to connect to the internet. But of course the internet won't be there and they will go offline also. So your, your smartphones, your internet access uh, during this time will all terminate. You will be like Burma. You'll have no internet. And how are people going to react to that? Well, they're going to go crazy, is my analysis. They're not going to like it. Just take the phone away from somebody that uses it all the time. And if they don't have access to that phone, they are in a panic. You see them walking down the street and through the stores. Where is their head uh, poised? It's poised right looking into their cell phone at all times. So they're in a different world. So when you take that cell phone service away and, and the smartphone service is gone and you can't get on the internet and get your email or send a message to someone or see a photo, people will panic.
This is not going to be funny. This is going to be tough. So why is God doing this? Why is God, you know, sending a global earthquake during this prophetic end time? Well, it's really pretty simple. God is forcing everyone on earth into a timeout. God has a last day message for us, and he wants everyone's full attention. So how can he get their full attention when their head is stuck in a smartphone or they're surfing the internet or other things? Well, this earthquake is going to interrupt the normal things that they do every day. No more cell phone. The electricity is going to be off. You're not going to be able to travel and uh, run around town like you had been. And so God is going to get your 100% attention. And he has a message that he wants to give you. And he'll do this. And he'll use, I'll give you a little hint here, one of the future videos. He'll use the 144,000 messengers. That's what they're called in Revelation. They're called God's messengers. So God is going to send us a message through the 144,000. Well, that's about it for today. Well, until next time, what's up with prophecy today is wishing you God's special blessing. So we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.